guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have been so excited for this video. Basically in 2021, I want to experiment and find what is the best way for me to get book recommendations. Who are the people? What is the service? What is the source where I'm gonna find the best book recommendations for myself? I don't really like to waste my time reading books that I'm not interested in or that I don't think that I'm going to like. So it's very important to me that I am constantly being exposed to such a wide range of books that I might not be able to find. Right now, the main way that I get recommendations is booktube, watching booktube, following booktubers. But I want to expand outside Side of that because obviously within the booktube bubble there are specific books that are always talked about and stuff that's never talked about stuff that I will never be exposed to and I constantly want to be exposed to new books that I have never heard of before so for the first part of this year-long series or whatever I am turning to you if there is any one source in the world that will be able to understand my taste and what I'm going to like it's you guys. For the past seven years, I have documented pretty much every single book that I have read, what I thought about it, what I liked, what I didn't like. So if there's anyone that's gonna know what I will like and what I won't like, it's the people watching my videos. So for the first part of this series, I wanna read your recommendations. This isn't like a judgment on your taste and whether I think you have good taste in books. It's do I think my subscribers going forward are going to be a good source for me to find books. So before we get into the vlog portion, I want to quickly talk about the sponsor for today's video, Native. So Native reached out to me and sent me three of their deodorants and I've actually been using Native deodorants for over a year now. My mom actually introduced me to them and they recently launched their plastic free versions, which is the same formula, but it's made from paperboard and Native is committed to sourcing from sustainable managed forests and they are a proud partner of 1% for the planet and commits 1% of plastic free deodorant sales to environmental nonprofits. The reason why I started using Native is because they are vegan and cruelty free along with being aluminum, paraben, and sulfate free. And if you buy from their website they also offer free shipping to the US. Before I was using Native I really didn't have like a go-to deodorant brand. I would just buy whatever I could find that was available but since I've been using Native deodorants I would like I will not use anything else. I love it. So the three scents that I chose are coconut and vanilla, which is by far my favorite out of the three. It just smells so like sweet and warm. As you can see, I'm like almost out of it. <laughs> There's only a little bit left. Then lavender and rose, which smells very floral. And then citrus and herbal musk, which is a very like citrus fruity smell, but it also has like a deepness to it. I don't know. I'm not great at describing scents. <laughs> they also have a really wide range of scents on their website. I exercise almost every morning and these really help me to feel dry and fresh. And three of the plastic free deodorants are normally $39, but if you use my link, you will get them for $29, which is 25% off. So thank you to Native for sponsoring this video. So currently right now, it is October. I'm not planning on reading these books until January so I have some time to collect all of them. I put on both Instagram and Twitter asking for recommendations. So on Twitter I just generally ask recommend me something. I didn't want to put like any direction or criteria. I just wanted a general like recommend me something you think I'm gonna like. And then on Twitter I was more specific. I put up a picture of like 16 of my favorite books and I said based on these books recommend me something. So hopefully out of these two posts, I'm gonna have something <laughs> that I can read. I really don't have any like criteria of what I'm looking for, like in genre or age range or length or anything. However, I mostly wanna pick books that I have either never heard of before or I would not have picked up outside of this recommendation. Cause I'm sure without even going into these and looking at them, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of recommendations that are very obvious, like Middle Game by Sean and McGuire. I can already tell you right now, a lot of people are probably gonna recommend me that, which is like, yes, I should read that. 
I'm, I know. But I really want to stick to books that had I not gotten this recommendation, I would not have picked it up. So I want to choose 10 books total and I think what I'm going to do is split this video into two parts. So part one, I will read five books and then part two, I will read the other five books. So let's start selecting the books. So I'm gonna look at Twitter first. That was where I asked for specific recommendations. The one that has the most likes so far is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones, which I do know of, but I have not read it, nor do I own it. I know that it's horror. That's all I know. We're gonna open that as a maybe. Multiple people have recommended City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. One person said that it is like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Another person said that it's basically a similar initial premise to Seven Husbands, but with the quiet sensibilities of Station Eleven and a similar writing style to Jane Steele. Okay, that's a definite yes. Foul is Fair by Hannah Kappen. I have never heard of this. Let me look it up. It said it has some of If We Were Villains vibes, Dark Academia with Murders and Revenge based on Macbeth. That sounds really interesting. Okay, so we have three books so far. Other Words for Smoke by Sarah Maria Griffin. Young Adult Fantasy. The reviews say that it's weird, dark, and witchy. That sounds like my kind of thing, so let's go with that. The Test by Sylvian Neuville. Kayla from Books and Lala said, it's a weird ass book. We're gonna go with that as well. Someone recommended Alatsoe. I don't know if I've heard of this. Alatsoe, am I pronouncing that right? Alatso? Alatsoe? I feel like Alatsoe. Ooh, this cover is beautiful. Okay, this sounds good. This is by um, an indigenous author. I've been trying to read more indigenous authors, so okay, let's do this one. On Instagram, somebody suggested The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, who is an author that I've read something before, but I have not heard of this book. Oh, this came out like a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago. Somewhere out beyond the edge of the universe, there's a library that contains an infinite number of books each one the story of another reality okay that sounds totally of my alley the hollow places oh by t king fisher i have dnf'd a book by this author not because i wasn't enjoying it i just wasn't really in the mood for it it was the twisted ones i feel like i want to go back and try that book again but let's see what this is about a young woman discovers a strange portal in her uncle's house leading to madness and terror Okay, let's add this. Oh my god, so far, like a lot of these that I'm finding that I've never heard of before sound like my perfect books. I'm already so excited. Okay, Freshwater centers around a young Nigerian woman who develops separate selves within her as a result of being born with one foot on the other side. That sounds really interesting. The Affair of the Mysterious Letter. Oh, this is by Alexis Hall. Outside of this, Alexis Hall is an author that I have been recommended so many times. So let me see what this is about. In this charming, witty, and weird fantasy novel, Alexis Hall pays homage to Sherlock Holmes with a new twist on those renowned characters. Okay, this is a definite yes. So I think that was 10 books, if I can count correctly. Um, oh my god, I'm gonna have to edit so much of this out because I've been here for an hour just like searching books. But here are the 10 books that I have chosen that I'm going to read probably through the month of January. And I'm really excited. I feel like I have a good selection of books here. And I feel like this is going to be a really great way to start 2021. Oh my god, it's going to be 2021. You guys are going to be seeing this when we're finally out of this horrible year. What's 2021 like? How's it going? I am going to try to order and collect all of these books and then I will see you for me in a couple months, <laughs> for you guys in a couple seconds with the first book. It's 2021. This must be what a time traveler feels like because it does not feel like the time does not feel real. So I agonized over what the first book I wanted to read in 2021 was because I looked back at what the first books from all the years I've been on booktube was and for the most part they were all like books I ended up really liking. Two years in a row it was The Cruel Prince and then The Wicked King. One year it was Every Heart of Doorway by Seanan McGuire, but then I discovered that in 2016 and in 2020, the first book that I read 
was a one star. So in 2016, the first book I read was November 9 by Colleen Hoover, which is my all time least favorite book. Like there is not a book I hate more than that book. And that ended up being one of the worst years of my life. And then 2020, the first book I read was The Wives by Taryn Fisher, which was my least favorite book of that year. And we all know how 2020 went. So now I'm just like, it's the curse. It's the curse of the one star book. I did this. I'm a very superstitious person. And like I'm paranoid and I spiral into conspiracies. So now I'm like, I have to read a five star book or the year is just gonna be shit. I put a lot of thought into what book I wanted to read first. And the one that I chose is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So this was recommended on Instagram from Paige. I'm pretty sure this won the Goodreads Award for Best Fiction. I could be wrong and I'm not gonna double check. <laughs> I have read a book by Matt Haig before. It was called The Humans and it was a very interesting book. Like I enjoyed it. It was super weird. It was like from the point of view of an alien pretending to be human, just observing humans and like observing the way that humans, like the culture and how they act. And it was a very interesting read. So this, from what I know about it, it is about this library that houses all of the decisions that somebody makes and the main character gets the opportunity to go to the library and relive certain parts of her life and make a different choice and then see how that life would be had she made this choice so that sounds really interesting like i understand why this is recommended to me because i love any type of like alternate realities, timelines, fantastical library type of situations. So yeah, I'm gonna start this today. I'm also doing a live reading sprint on my channel later uh, in the afternoon with Megan. So I'm gonna try to read a little bit before then, but I, I wanna save a lot of this book for those reading sprints. It's like so gloomy out today. I feel like it doesn't even look like morning time. I just got done with my live reading sprints with Megan, which was so much fun. And I am now 120 pages into this book, so I'm like halfway. <laughs> I am loving this so much. I didn't really realize going into this <clears throat> how emotional the book was going to be. Oh my god, my voice. What is going on? Okay, that sounds better. I didn't realize going into this how emotional that it was going to be, but like... <laughs> During the reading sprints, I was trying so hard not to cry. Megan, this is making me want to cry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. It made me want to cry so much as well. But, like, I guess I just didn't look much into this book to know that it deals with very sensitive topics. So, like, literally, the first couple of chapters, they each start out with a countdown to when the main character dies. So it's 19 years before she decided to die, 27 hours before she decided to die, nine and a half hours before she decided to die. So it's like leading up to the main character committing suicide. And that's how she ends up in this library. It's like the library is kind of in between life and death. So she committed suicide because she had depression and a lot of things in her life just didn't pan out the way that she wanted to. She feels like she kind of like continuously went down the wrong path and made the wrong choices. In this library, the librarian presents her with the Book of Regrets, which is a book that has every single regret that she's ever felt. Small ones, major ones and she's able to um, pick out a regret and travel to a lifetime where she made a different decision so like one of them is one of her regrets is that she wishes she hadn't backed out of her wedding two days before so she goes to a lifetime where she married the guy and sees how that is and basically she's able to like try on all these different lives and all these different paths that her life could have gone on and whenever she feels disappointment from that life it'll pull her out of it so it's very like philosophical you know it's very much like analyzing life and happiness and what it means to be happy and fulfilled even the most perfect life where you made all the right decisions and did all the right things you can still be unhappy or still not be fulfilled it's very interesting so far um and there's definitely been parts where i was very emotional no i feel like the way that suicide and depression is talked about in this book is just so real and like i'm just really enjoying it i'm very impressed with this book so far 
There are all these deer staring at me right now. Can you guys see them? Can I help you? What do you want? They're like, can I talk to you about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? I finished the Midnight Library. I think I'm gonna end up giving this four stars. I really loved it. Like the concept, the message, all of that was really great. However, I feel like the entire time I was very aware of the fact that I was reading a book and that I was being told these messages. I never really felt like I fully got immersed in the story and the characters. It was like I was seeing the whole thing behind a glass wall, which is fine. I don't feel like, I don't really know if this was the type of book that I was meant to be like totally in the world. It's literary fiction and I feel like a lot of times that's just how literary fiction is or that's how I've always felt with literary fiction. Like I'm just very aware that it's a book and I'm reading a book and I'm being told a story and the author wrote this and it's hard to really like lose yourself in that, which is fine. Again, I don't really think that's what this book was intending to do, but I don't think that it is like an all time new favorite, <clears throat> but it was great. Like the writing was really great. Like I said, I love the message the theme. I feel like the conversation around suicide and mental health was some of the most real conversations that I have ever read of in a book. So yeah, four stars. I feel like this was a successful recommendation. It was a great book to start out the year with because I did really like it. And I feel like this is going to be a book that I definitely recommend a lot, specifically if people are looking for books about mental health and about suicide and just about life. I think it was a really impactful book about about life and how we when we're in our own life we it's hard to really conceptualize how you're affecting other people it's really easy to think like oh nobody cares about me nobody would miss me if i'm gone you know nobody needs me but in reality the small things that you're doing every single day for people are helping them and are doing something for them but it's hard to really see that when you're in it it was great i'm glad i picked this as my first book <gasps> oh <laughs> They all moved. Now they're right here. They're like, um, hello, you want to buy my Girl Scout cookies? You want some Thin Mints? Some Tagalongs? So the book that I'm going to start right now is Foul is Fair. This was recommended to me and they said it has some If We Were Villains vibes, Dark Academia with Murders and Revenge based on Macbeth. Lots of buzzwords there. Macbeth is my favorite Shakespeare play and I tend to love Shakespeare retellings or things that are inspired by Shakespeare or experiment with those stories. And I also love revenge books. So it is YA contemporary, which is a genre that I don't tend to enjoy, but there is, I think, a subsection of YA contemporary that I love and that is women getting revenge on men who commit rape or sexual assault. So that includes The Female of the Species by Mindy McGuinness, Sadie by Courtney Summers, You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. I'm probably missing a couple, but I really like that umbrella <laughs> of YA contemporary. I feel like this fits into that. So aside from being a Macbeth retelling, this is about a girl who was sexually assaulted at a party. And so she now makes it her mission to get revenge on them and murder them. It says, golden boys beware, something wicked this way comes. I'm very excited. I feel like this book in particular is going to, if I end up liking it, it's going to embody the spirit or what I wanted the spirit of this video to be, which was to push me to pick up books that I would not have even considered that I'm going to end up loving. So yeah, I'm going to start this tonight and we'll see. I just realized my vacuum cleaner has been in the shot this entire time. Well, now y'all know I was just vacuuming my apartment. There's also, I bought this book used and it came with some tabs in it. I don't know if you can see them. There's some tabs from whoever owned this before me. So I'm very interested to get to those and see what they deemed so important to tab. Okay, I'm only on page 16 and I'm already obsessed. I already love it. This book is speaking to me on so many levels. I think... I don't really know how I want to review this book because obviously it touches on very sensitive topics. There is a content warning at the beginning, so it has sexual assault, rape culture, violence. Obviously there's very serious uh, things happening in this book. I always have struggled with reading books that 
deal with rape. They're books that I tend to avoid unless I know specifically it's a revenge story. Like, unless I know I'm gonna get some sort of cathartic satisfaction out of it, I can't do it. And so firstly, I wanna say going into this that the rape scene is not on page. I was kind of worried that one, it would be on page and that would I wouldn't be able to deal with it. And two, that it would be like, since you know it's coming, cause that's what the book is about, that it would, the stress of leading up to it would be too much. So I wanna say it's not on page at all. And by page two, it has happened. So by page two, it's happened off page and we're moving forward, which I really appreciated how the author got it out of the way very quickly. The book is not about the actual act of the rape, which I just appreciate so much. And it shows that the author actually knows and cares who this book is intended for. So I really appreciate the choice to not do that. So already on page 16, I have a lot of feelings about this book and I feel like there, oh, I don't know how to say this without like getting too personal. I feel like there's a specific kind of anger that you feel when something like this happens to you that I think people can't really understand unless they've experienced it. Just like primal rage so far, again, I'm only 16 pages in and so far, I feel like this book captures that rage perfectly. I also feel like already the book is really capturing the essence of Macbeth. Obviously this takes place like it's contemporary, modern time. The women aren't actually witches with magical abilities, but they capture the essence of the witches. So the main character, Elle, now, now Jade, she's changed her identity so that she can join the school that the boys are in attendance to. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, my zit is coming out. Sorry, got distracted. Um, she's she's changed her identity and her appearance so that she can attend the school that the boys go to so she can like infiltrate into their life. And her and her friends, who she calls her coven, are plotting this revenge. And there's a point when they all chant the word revenge over and over and over. And it literally just, it gave me chills because it felt like they were casting a spell just in the way that they were chanting it. 16 pages in, I already had so much to say about it. I'm really impressed by this book already. Don't mind me just covering up my zit that nobody freaking told me about. <laughs> so I'm a little bit further into the book and I almost feel like the book isn't even from the point of view of the main character anymore. At the beginning, like I said, she changed her identity. She changed her appearance and her name. And I feel like it's it's almost it almost feels as if she has let that rage that she feels completely take over and now the book is being told from the point of view of the rage like that's all that's left and it's very very interesting did i cover it i don't know but i feel like that's just like such an interesting way to tell the story all the other books that i've read that were like sexual assault revenge stories they all definitely had like an element of rage i feel like the one that encompassed it the best other than this book was you must not miss that one also kind of had an element of where like the rage took on a life form of its own i feel like this one i'm gonna say this so many times it just does such a good job at depicting what that rage looks like and feels like and it's really taken on a life of its own and become the main character. So yeah, I am still just like really enjoying this. Let's get back to my book. Where was I? I'm like, I think I'm like a hundred pages in. Right here. I'm on page 108. Also, I just want to tell you guys, whoever owned this book before, very interesting tabs. I'm really enjoying the tabs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who it was, but I'm curious. There's not a lot of tabs in the middle. It's like they tabbed the very beginning, one thing in the middle, and then a couple things at the end. So I'm, 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 I'm curious. You guys have to look at his sweater. It's so cute. Come here, look. Come show them your sweater. It's got a little fox with a bow tie. You're so cute. I have been writing down a bunch of quotes from this book that are just like really speaking to me, which doesn't happen often where there's like enough, usually like in books, there's maybe like one or two quotes where I'm like, ooh, that, that's a nice quote. I'm saving so many quotes from this book that I'm just like, yes. So I thought it would be fun if I did a little quote montage and just while I'm reading it, 
read you guys out of context quotes that I really like. But I will be sure to redact any spoilers. We will start the montage right now. I am ruinous and unruined. I'm fresh-faced, wholesome, girl next door. And you'd almost never know my lips are still poison when I look the way a good girl is supposed to look. We'll be the witches they don't believe in until it's too late. I am exactly the wrong way to be a victim. We're four sirens, like the ones in those stories. The ones who sing and make men die. Tonight she will walk out and never come back. And I cry for her. I cry. I am the girl I saved. I am the queen and the king killer. I'm not sorry. I finished Foul is Fair. I just did not put it down at all. It was so good and it read so fast. I'm kind of in awe of like how much this book spoke to me. It was very cathartic and satisfying. There were so many parts like obviously from that quote montage like there were so many moments and quotes and things that the main character said that just spoke to me so much. In terms of this being a story about sexual assault. I don't like I don't know anything about this author. I just feel like she knew what she was talking about. She knew how to handle this topic really well, and I really appreciate that. So then on the other hand, if we're looking at this as a Shakespeare Macbeth retelling, I've read a lot of Shakespeare retellings and I feel like none of them have succeeded equally in being something brand new and unique and taking that original story and turning it into something of its own while also still maintaining the essence of the original. <laughs> Nothing I've read has been able to succeed in both but this did. Like this was able to create something totally unique and different, but it also really maintained that spirit of Macbeth, the tone, the feeling of the witches, the descent that Macbeth goes through into guilt and then craving power, the hysteria. I think that the main character embodied Lady Macbeth beautifully. And I just loved this. I loved this so much. The writing of this book was very unique. I feel like if there is a reason people aren't going to like this book, it's going to be the way that it's written. And the only thing that I really feel like I can pick, I can compare the writing to is the writing style of Bunny by Mona Awad. The way that both books are written have the same vibe to me. Obviously Bunny is like so fucking weird. Like what even was that? <laughs> and this is a little bit more straightforward but just the writing style of both of them. And I don't even know how to explain it in, in words. They felt the same to me. I'm gonna give it 4.5 stars. Let's just go there. But yeah, this recommendation was a success and I definitely need to look into this author more and see what else she's written. Oh, I didn't read the acknowledgements and I just caught a peek of it. It's probably gonna make me cry. I wonder what the dedication was. For every girl who wants revenge. I loved this. book that I will be reading is A Latsue by Darcy Little Badger. So from what I know about this, it is a Lip Pan Apache mythology story. We're following a girl who has the ability to raise the ghosts of dead animals. So her dog is a ghost dog. At the beginning of the book, her cousin dies and as he dies, his spirit visits her in a dream to tell her that he was murdered and the person that murdered him and that she needs to go and protect his family. So the book is her trying to solve this murder and catch the person who did it. And yeah, I'm excited. When I chose this book, I really haven't heard anything about it. And then within the past couple months, I've been seeing more and more people talk about this and really enjoy it. And also this cover is just stunning and like the inside hardcover has dogs on it. I'm a sucker for a dog book. Okay, so yesterday I read about half of this book, about 200 pages in, and I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm enjoying it more than I was expecting to, especially from the beginning. It did take me a little bit to get into it. It's very interesting because when I started reading it, like the first couple chapters, I had to look up if this was young adult or middle grade because it felt younger to me and like the characters felt younger. And this is young adult. The main character is 17. I think it says she's a senior in high school. And so I was trying to figure out why it feels younger to me. And I think that it's because the young adult that I normally read, or I feel like also a lot of the young adult that is being published lately feels older and the characters feel older and more mature and act like they're in their 20s and they're a lot like darker and 
more mature and sexier and I feel like it's sort of skewed in my mind what I think young adult is and so when I read something that actually reads like a young adult is supposed to read and where the characters are actually acting like teenage characters I felt like it was younger but like all of the teen characters in here are acting like teenagers like they're just acting like normal teenagers instead of how I feel like young adult characters have been written a lot lately which is way older than they are so I don't know I just thought that was interesting how I was like questioning if this was a middle grade when in reality it just feels like how young adult is supposed to be but yeah I'm really enjoying it it's cool because what I didn't realize going into this this world is basically like a reimagined version of our world where literally like all of the myths and all of the legends are true so not only is there like indigenous legends that are true and creatures and supernatural beings from indigenous legends but there's ones from all other cultures as well like there's fairies and there's vampires all of the cultures supernatural legends are real and everybody in this world is aware of it which I just think is cool I feel like a lot of times when you read like supernatural or paranormal type of books supernatural and paranormal elements are hidden or they're a secret but I like that in this world everybody just like is aware of it and knows of it and it's like a normal thing in society I also love her dog oh my god her dog's name is Kirby and he's just like the most loyal precious thing ever and I'm just a sucker for like a dog companion obviously because I have my dog companion okay so I have finished Elatsue and I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I really, really liked this. I am so glad that I picked this up for this video because I probably wouldn't have otherwise, but I thought it was just like a really great blend of like contemporary with folklore, mythology, supernatural vibes. I really liked Elatsue or Ellie as a main character. So like I said, basically the plot of this is that her cousin has been murdered and his spirit comes to her and tells her the person who killed him. So she travels to the city that he lives in and is investigating the person who killed him who is the town doctor who's like very high up in society and like protected by everyone and loved by everyone but obviously he's doing some sketchy practices. It really is all highlighting the injustices and violences that are committed against indigenous people and their lands. There was this one like really incredible like empowering moment that I loved so much. So basically like I said there are vampires in this world and there was a scene in which Ellie and a couple other characters are on the road and they're attacked by vampires. One of the ways to get rid of a vampire is like if they come into your home or they come onto your property and you like own that property and it's yours, you can expel them from it. You can say like, you must leave and they have to leave. And so since they're like on this public property, the vampire thinks that they can't do that. And they tell the vampire, I banish you, you must leave. And the vampire is so shocked when that works and he has to leave. And there's this moment where I wish I saved like what page it was so I could read it, but there's this moment where she's like, this is our land. This land has always belonged to us just because it was taken from us and someone now claims that it's public land or that it's owned by this person or this person doesn't matter. This is Lip and Apache land. And so they have the ability to expel the vampire from it. And I just thought that was so cool. I also just really loved like the pacing and the way that the book was told because it weaves like old legends and stories throughout the actual narrative. So like we'll be in the middle of a scene and then the main character or someone else will like reminisce on an old story that somehow ties into what's happening right now. And so I just thought the way that we kind of like went in and out of those stories, it was like very intentional. Also, all of the beginning of chapters, like all of the chapter headers are illustrated by Rovina Kai and they're just like the cutest little illustrations. Most of them are of Kirby, which I appreciate. He's just, they're so cute. Like, oh, they're just so cute. And yeah, I just really, really liked this. I definitely would want to read more books from this author. I think that this was her debut. So I'm like super excited to read more books by her. So this recommendation was a success. <laughs> Okay, 
and I'm going to start my next book. So the book that I'm starting is The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. Like I said in the beginning, I have heard of this author. I have read or I DNF'd a book by this author. I actually have it. Let me grab it. I DNF'd The Twisted Ones, not because I wasn't enjoying it. I just put it down and then never picked it back up, but I do want to get back to it at some point. But this is the book that was recommended to me. This is their new book. I think they came out last year. And all I know about it is that it is about these two people who find a portal in the wall and I think they get trapped there, which like sounds like my kind of horror. So I'm really excited to start this. Stephen Graham Jones said, can horror be this fun while still delivering on the creepiness, the dread, the ick? In Kingfisher's hands, it can. I also believe that this was a finalist in the Goodreads Choice Awards for Horror. I feel like out of all of the ones that I have chosen, this sounds the most like something that I would pick up and give five stars. We'll see how I feel. Okay, so I've read a bit of The Hollow Places now, so I can give you a better synopsis. Basically, this is following a woman named Kara who is recently divorced, and she's helping out her uncle who owns this museum of, like, weird, bizarre things. The museum is called the Glory to God Museum of Natural Wonders, Curiosities, and Taxidermy. And one night, she is in the museum, and she discovers a hole in the wall and thinks that, like, one of the customers accidentally knocked something over. And so she has one of her friends who works at the cafe next door come and help her patch it up. And while they're investigating it, they realize that inside the wall, it's like another room or a hallway. So they decide to make the, the hole in the wall bigger and go into it to see what's back there. They go into the wall, it's a hallway that leads them to a door. They open the door and they find a bunker with another door. They open that door and boom, they're in another world. They find themselves in this really like dark, foggy, gray world. Very much I feel like the cover of this book accurately gives the vibes of the world. It's very foggy. It's a lot of water with a bunch of like little islands and each island looks like it has another bunker and all of the islands are covered in these willow trees and so they go out and start exploring they mark which bunker which island they came from so they can find their way back well they go and explore and suddenly they're lost they can't find their way back they can't find which island was theirs they can't find which bunker they came from and they're trapped there and really freaky stuff starts happening so that's where i'm at right now they just discovered that they can't find their way back it's definitely really creepy so far this is really the kind of horror that i like where it's much more like atmospheric bizarre horror than like outright scares. There was a scene that was so creepy. Basically, they found their way into this bunker and written on the walls were really creepy messages. So the first one was, they can hear you thinking. And then they walked further into the bunker and found, pray they are hungry. Definitely super creepy vibes. Something really crazy just happened. Like the body horror in this book is on another level it's kind of like i don't want to compare it to annihilation because it's totally different but it has like similar actually the more i think about it the more it does remind me of annihilation but like totally different vibes i really like body horror and this one does it so well i think this is my first five star of the year you guys, oh my god, I loved this. This is literally the exact kind of horror that I like. It's very bizarre, very weird. I realized this a little bit into it that it's basically like the opposite of Wayward Children's series because in that series, children find doors to magical worlds that is like the perfect world for them. This is the opposite. This is two adults finding a world that wants to tear them apart, <laughs> literally. They're just having a bad time. They're just having a really, really bad time in that world. And I loved it. I also, at no point did I ever have any idea what 
was going on. It wasn't predictable. It wasn't like, okay, this is like really obvious. I know where this is gonna go. Like I never knew where it was gonna go. Like I knew that I would like it, but I didn't think I would like it this much. And now this just makes me even more excited to um, go back and try the Twisted ones again. And I wanna look into what else this author has written because somebody DM'd me recently and told me that they write fantasy romance as well, which is like, did I really just find an author who writes fantasy romance and horror? So obviously this recommendation was a success. So far out of all of the books that I've read for this, this is my favorite. So now I'm going to start the test by Sylvian Nouvel. I think this is going to be the final book that I read for this part. And this is very short. It is under 100 pages and I know absolutely nothing about it. And I kind of want to just dive into it. Okay, it's like 30 minutes later. I have finished the test. I don't know what to think. I don't know how I feel. I've never gone back and forth so many times. Essentially, Oh, what can I even say about this? I don't even know what I can say that's not too much. Okay, I'm gonna read you what the back says because I feel like I can't say any more than this. So, Britain, the not too distant future. Adir is sitting the British citizenship test. He wants his family to belong. 25 questions to determine the worth of a life. 25 chances to impress. When the test takes an unexpected and tragic turn, Adir is handed the power of life and death. But how do you value another person's life when all you have is multiple choice? I'm so conflicted. First 10 pages, I was like, oh no, I'm not gonna like this. I'm probably gonna give this two stars at most. But then it takes a turn and I was like, okay, this is getting interesting. But then it takes another turn. It's like twist on twist on twist. What was this? I think I really liked it. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't even know what to say about it. It's so short. I feel like for the page length, I'm so impressed with how many twists there were. It managed to accomplish everything it wanted to accomplish. It also discussed like so many topics, immigration, race, sexism. I think I'm gonna give this four stars. I'm very impressed with this author's ability to take me on such a wild ride in such a short amount of pages. So this recommendation was a success. I'm still so confused how I feel. But that is gonna be the end of part one. Here are the books that I read in this part. And then here are the ones that I still have to read in part two. So I really hope you guys like this video. I am really excited to continue on with this experiment because so far, as we have seen, I have enjoyed all of these books. It could have just been that I picked the best ones for part one and part two is going to be a complete disaster or this trend could continue and all 10 books are going to be ones that I love. That's what I hope happens. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.